Hello my scrapping friends. I'm Deborah Kozlovic and I'm a Creative Memories Independent Advisor from Australia. Welcome to Creating Your Memories. Today I want to continue my series on scrap your scraps and this would be scrap your scraps part five. Um, as you can see on my layout I've actually dived into some of my stash and pulled out some scraps that I had laying around and converted it into this layout and adding my photos on the side. Um, another way of doing this layout also, you know, not just having it on the side, you know, it can be reversible. You can actually just spin it around and using the same layout as a 360. So as you can see, it's very versatile and you can use this layout any which way that you would like to use it um, and today I'm going to show you how I completed this and as I said I've used my scraps so to make the layout today I'm going to be using summertime and I think some of the stickers or um, not the, so much the papers but mainly the stickers and maybe the variety mats or whatnot could be from other summer you know releases of other collections so to get started i'll show you what i will be using today to make my layout so i pulled out some of my scrap pieces of summertime papers and i've already started trimming some off that i didn't have so mainly these strips would be three and a quarter half strips and a quarter strips. So most of these strips that we have lying around because we trimmed down our paper or we've got some off cuts from other various page layouts that we have completed. So I've used my scraps for that. So I have cut um, a fair few here or what I didn't have. So I'll put them aside and also in the layout today I will be using um, some variety mats so I've just pulled out a few that I might use to complete my layout and also I've pulled out fun in the Sun because I might use that as my title I also have some summertime laser cut embellishments. I'm not sure if I'll use any of those, but I did pull them out. And also some stickers that I've pulled out. I mean, that one, you know, most some of them aren't with the summertime, some of them are, but I will be using those and other stickers that I might have from other collections, depending on what you know, sticker variation by going back to this one that I might put to match my photos. So going on to my photo sizing now, I've already pre-done these. Um, so I've already got, I've got two three and a half by three and a half photos and I've backed them with three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And I also have three, three by three photos and I've mapped them on a three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So I want to try and variate and put all these photos onto this layout that I will be completing today. You, I don't think, you know, for this layout, I don't think that you would go any bigger than a three and a half. You could go smaller. The smaller the photos, the more that you can actually put on your layout. Um, I haven't tried it with, you know, like using anything bigger. I think my biggest one on this layer would be this photo here. So I'll just measure that. Just find my ruler. And measuring that photo, that one's also a three and a half by three and a half. And all these are three by threes. This one is, yeah, also a three by three. So mainly the same size. I've used a three by three and then also a three and a half by three and a half. 
So to get started, we don't need any um, any punching tools or anything like this to complete this layout. The only thing that I mainly used was my 12 inch trimmer and just some adhesive. So this is a great one also if you don't have a lot of tools, you can actually just, you know, pull out your scraps and then make and complete a layout. So to start off with, I'm going to trim off a half an inch on each side. So then there again, this one didn't trim right off here. I will use and coordinate these strips into my layout. So then it's just spinning around and taking another half an inch off the other side. And then I'm gonna back it with a navy blue cardstock. But before I place it down on the cardstock, I'm going to start by completing, you know, the strips, putting the strips on first. So then just looking at my strips and then going down and coordinating them, you know, designing or which um, order that I would like to complete it in. So I'm just going to leave a gap from the top and a little bit on the side, but also on the other layer before I adhere these down, just using, you know, a pair of micro tip scissors on some of them I just cut them on an angle just to give it a little nice effect not on all of them you can actually still leave them straight they don't have to line up with each other you can actually do a jagged edge as you're going down which makes it more effective So I'm just going to trim and I think there's a little bit of paper hanging off this end. So I might use that green. So then all I'm going to do at the moment is just going down and laying out my strips on my page. In what order I want to do it so now that I've have a couple there I'm just going to move these ones aside I'm just going to spin that around and I'm just going to use the repositional tape just so that I can get them in order and I can stick them down as I go I think I might use that side um, and stick them down as I go but I'm only going to stick down one end. So I'm just going to find my ruler so I can leave a gap at the top so it's straight. So I'm just going to leave like a quarter of an inch from the top. Not even putting it all the way to the end. But I'm just going to leave this bit open for now and I will hear that down after I completed this side and putting my paper strips in the order that I would like them in. So I'm just putting a little bit of repositional tape on just that one end, lining them up and just adhering as we go. might do just checking out all the colors I have I try to versatile and get every different color I also have some you know just going through these scraps I have some water one that I would like to put in but I had some I hit some white strip so I want to try and put these water ones in between as we go because it is on the beach just 
just color coordinating just you know just keep going down to you know what you like and what color coordinating that you would like to do on your layout I'm just going to keep going down cutting that edge adhering one end and then sticking as we go so as you can see as I'm going down it's starting to make a nice little just trying to get this page up the fingers aren't doing what I want them to do so as you can see now turning that up the right way you can actually see that it's going to make a nice little edge of a border on that one side so I'm just going to keep going down until I get to the bottom with my coordinating designing papers of my strips as I go down so now that we've nearly completed going down the page I'm just going to add my last little strip which is a quarter of an inch strip and I'm just going to add that to the bottom and then making sure my pieces are straight and lining up I'm just going to bring in my photos before cutting off this side and just setting out where I would like my photos so I know you know like what I'm going to cut down and how much I would cut off so as I said I want to try and incorporate all these photos I'm not sure how I'm going to go with this I might not succeed but I'm going to give it a good shot of adding them all on So if I place that one underneath, pick that one up, that one on top, maybe that on. So just fiddling around to see what I would like. I think I might do them something like that. So now, now I know where I'll put position my photo. I'm just going to get my scissors and I'm going to trim probably just over halfway. So just estimating that. I'm just not going to measure. I'm just going to cut because either way your photos will cover some of that up but also on this one I might leave some longer bits maybe the wave the water one out a bit than what I did with the previous one so with the previous one I just cut straight down and then added the embellishments and on the other side so I might leave that water one and maybe the sand one and then just keep cutting up so I need to go back in a bit it's going too far out So continuing to cut up as we go. Might leave that sand one there for now and take that one off. So just put all them little pieces aside, but I'm sure that we'll find something else to use up our little scrap pieces. So just looking at this now, might take that one about there, 
just cutting it on an angle just to give it some kind of different effect. These two I might do the same and then I'll turn that around and then cut it on the opposite way. These ones might end up getting cover up but if they don't I do wish to use them so they're on my layout. So now what I'm just going to do now is just going to stick down these other ends so they are secure just finding that multi-purpose tool because that will help me lift up my pieces so I can put some repositional tape underneath you only need a small amount of repositional because you just want them just to adhere down just a little bit and you can group them together as you go so it's a quicker process and then just lining them up so they all still line up as you go down and just these bottom ones now So now I'm going to do these bigger ones that I have on the outside, exactly the same as what I did to the other ones. So this. And then just a couple more to go. Okay, that one wants to go a little bit of a walkabout, so we'll put him back into place. So spinning that around again, this one's not. Okay, so now I'm going to bring back in my photos. I bring that that one in and. That one there, and this one up the top. And it's got the pink on it, so it's pink with pink. So I might change that and put the blue. So just up the top, just so it's covering that edge. Just angling them a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. Then I have and I have that nice cloud shot. And I found that put backing it with that musty pink, it brought out the sky a little bit more. So I do like that effect. It's another reason why I want to use, you know, like all these photos because they coordinate and just the sky and the cloud in the background actually bounces off that must pink designer paper. So I think I am going to just do the pink on the pink. Well, I just went offline just to sort out my photos and to see what I was going to do. And I've actually decided to trim up those edges and have a clean space canvas on that right hand side. And to position my photos, I have tacked down my photos just on the one side for now from where I want them. 
but in that I do want to coordinate in the layer before I tack down the rest of my photos is putting in these surfboards along the edge somewhere so I'm just going to measure that well not actually measure it but just cut it in half so I'm just going to cut it in half around about there I'm um, that's just a guess that that is half so as I said I want to coordinate in these surfboards so I think I might put those surfboards down the bottom and maybe yeah um, so I'm going to put one lot down the bottom so I'm just going to tuck it underneath this photo so I'm going to have it sitting on that leafy coloured Hold that up. So I'm just going to have that down the bottom there. And then also using the other bit. So I'm just going to neaten up this edge. Because that will sit on the outside. So you're going to see that. So I might, might put that one around about in there. So then with my other photos, I have decided to put... This one down the bottom, so I'm just going to completely tuck that down with um, the tape runner. I might should have thought about this before I stuck this sticker down, but I might have the surfboards going up a little bit. So I might see if I can just actually stick that photo underneath. A little bit if we can get that up so putting it under just making sure that is straight just eyeballing it so I'm just gonna upright and see just about there and then with my other one I was going to put it there but I just decided to put the surfboards there so I might put that one on the top I might put it at the top of the thing. So now I'm going to just tuck down the rest of my photos just to secure them. So now bringing in back the variety mats that I've got. So I might put fun in the sun. So I'm just going to bring back in the 12 inch trimmer. I'm just going to trim this off. Also using my guides. Of where I want to trim that. So I don't want a lot of green. I just mainly want the title. Cut that with the scissors. So 
so then still using that guide so I know when I'm cutting that. So right, lift that just slightly. And incorporate that one just there. So I'm just gonna hold that down and tack it down. And just lifting this. So there's my title. So it's starting to come together. I think I have a few more photos on it than I wanted to. Maybe I should have done less because if I'm going back to this one, it's more on the side. So, you know, to complete this layout, I'm losing a lot of my um, scrap now that I should have on the photos maybe a little bit smaller but I'm thinking I might remove this one so I can still have a bit of still there and I'm thinking this is the fun thing about you know doing things from scratch on camera and moving you know like stuff around so I've got all the adhesive spots there, but I can move them. So I might put my title in the corner over there. Just making that straight. So removing that one photo, it does make you know a lot of difference in your layout so now I'm just going to pull in these little pieces that I have and I'm just going to get the scissors so the way I'm going to make these little frames is I'm just going to eyeball it I'm not going to measure it I mean you can do it with the you know like the trimmer if you want to but I'm just going to cut them and eyeball them and instead of going through the hassle of using the trimmer on this piece so it's all going to look the same in the end so I'm just going to to lift because I have got some room underneath to put under there And then I thought I'd also use the darker colour up the top. So I'm just bringing the trimmer and I might trim that a little bit. So I might trim it at two because I don't want a lot of it. And then if I wanted to, I could still use that side. So I'm just going to use the scissors and I'm going to exactly the same is just cut around. So I'm just going to cut off the little journaling boxes. I guess get rid of that little bit of white. Too big for me so I am going to trim it a little bit more but then trimming this off will then give you you know like an option of having two other frames I think that dark blue on the dark blue is clashing 
So I'm just going to trim that down a little bit more. So then using my multi-purpose tool, I might just turn this around and then having it under like so. So then, so I know where I want them, so I'm just going to put some little bit of repositional tape on this ends. And then tuck that back under again and position it in place. And the same with this one, a little bit of repositional. Might take a little bit of the ends on this one because I don't think I need it that long. You can overlap these, you can have them separate. It's using up, you know, just those little bits that you haven't used, you've put aside and you were thinking about using them and then you can just incorporate them in onto your layout. So, seeing what other little bits we have. I might bring in, I'm just going to back that, so then you can see now it makes it look different again. So I might cut this curvy bit out and then add that on my side. Cut it out, see what it looks like and then give that option of using it or not using it so I might use it over there so I'm just lining it up with the bottom of that photo mat now if I look with my as I said before, I don't think I might use any of these because I think they're a little bit too big. And we'll go through them and see what's in there. So we've got the leaves, mysterious leaf. So I get a wave. But I think with me incorporating the surfboards down the bottom mm. and we have and then we have that so they're all too big I did like the wave if I pulled out these a little bit earlier I could have used the wave down the bottom but not to worry so I'm just going to go through my stickers the ones that I've actually pulled out um, and see what I still have like I don't have a lot on there they're more of titles than anything else so my pull out my other stickers and see if anything bounces out at me so I've got all these older stickers here so these like collections are just going you know like way back so there's more of these only titles that I have left so actually embellishment sort of things I mean the push bike and things like that doesn't seem to go with the theme that I have there 
a bit relaxed life's a beach but I always have that other title on there and I don't think I have any of the embellishments so I might adhere the top layer down on the base A lot of you probably thinking that I'm using a lot of tape runner, but I like to make sure that it's, um, you know, like stuck down, that it's not going to come apart and it's not going to come off. And I think a lot of us do the same thing with our repositional tape because we just love the repositional tape and we do overuse it. So I'm just going to center that down, making sure that it's even on both sides so none of this really applies with my theme of my layout so I might go further in my stash and see what I can find so then I would just you know like put a few stickers or embellishments down the side to add to my layout you know as I've done here I've just gone through add some little sayings because I don't actually have that um, for the big heading or title like I have on that page over there so I've just um, added a few little embellishments and then lifted some of them with the foam squares to give them some dimension so I mean you know like the other thing I might be able to do on this layout you know is incorporating this maybe cutting it down but then it doesn't really go the way that I want it to sit so I will complete this fun in the sun layout using your scraps from your scraps like your quarter inch your half inch your three quarter inch I don't think I've done anything bigger than that I didn't use the one inch but you could use the one inch if you'd like to um, so I will finish this one and then I'll post it up so you can see the finished product. I hope you enjoyed Scrap Your Scraps Part 5. So please remember to give me some love and subscribe to my channel. If you're liking my videos that I'm producing with you all, please let me know anything that you would like to know. Please leave a comment and I will get back to you. In the meantime, happy scrapping everyone.